thought we'd do some more graphs. We'll go ahead and do letter C. Um, so we've got this graph down here. I know that maybe some of these are harder to read, but as long as we know what one hash mark stands for, then we can figure out the rest. So if this is pi over 3, this would be 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, which would be 1 pi, and then 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, etc. So just counting by pi over 3s. All right, so we've got to figure out where the axis is going to be. So we've got 3 and 5, so we have 8 total here, which means 4 would be in the middle. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So right here. And notice then, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 above and 1, 2, 3, 4 below. I also want to make sure I remember to go ahead and draw my two different um, sections for my table here. Next thing I do is I go ahead and I do my um, key points. And let's see, this would be a star. All right. So let's start um, labeling. This would definitely be my closest sign. And this would, let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five to the left, or one, two, three, four to the right. So this one here is closer. I'm going to go ahead and do my amplitude. Remember we said we were 4 above and 4 below. So 4 for both of those. My axis is here at negative 1. This down one then, and notice this matches. And my c value, this is to the right. Pi, this would be one pi over three, so this would be two pi over three. So right, two pi over three, which means my c value is negative two pi over three. For cosine, 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 3 to the right. Which is negative 4 pi over 3 because these two should be opposite. Next thing I need to do is figure out my period. So let's see, I go from, I'm going to try and figure out how I can eas most easily do this. To me, it seems like this cosine here, this starts here and ends here right on the marks. So I don't have to like go in between or figure out halfway. So the cosine curve starts here and ends here. So let's count. 1 pi over 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 pi's over 3. So the period. I'll write this right down here, maybe. Period is 9 pi over 3, which is 3 pi, because 9 over 3 is 3 pi. Since that's the case, remember, 2 pi over b is always the period, so that'd be 3 pi. I'm going to cross multiply, and I get. 2 pi equals 3 pi b. Solving for b, so I divide both sides by 3 pi. So b is 2 thirds. Now I can write my equation y equals 4 times the sine of 2 thirds times x minus 2 pi over 3 minus 1. This equation is y equals 4 cosine 
2 thirds x minus 4 pi over 3 minus 1. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at, I thought, these graphs here. I, I have a feeling graphs are probably where you need the most help in practice, so I thought I'd use the rest of this video to just do as many graphs as I can get in. Um, this first one asks us to only write an equation for cosine. Um, so I am going to need an A, B, C, and D values. And then I'll write my equation. My first step is always to draw in my axis. I see that I'm 6 total. So 3 would be in the middle. 1, 2, 3, right here. And then I always double check. One, two, three above, one, two, three below. So my amplitude is three. So I go ahead and draw in my key points. Cosine, my starting points are at the top of the peaks. And this one is definitely my closest, which is right pi over 4, which makes this minus pi over 4. My um, axis is at negative 3, it's down 3, and my d value is negative 3. So now I need to um, figure out the period. Um, using cosine, I actually would not use cosine to figure out the period. I would use sine. Because if you look right here, a sine curve starts at zero and goes to pi. That's so easy. So then I know that the period is pi. So 2 pi over b equals the period, which is pi. I know that this would have to be 2 over 2. If you don't see that, then always just do your cross multiplying. 2 pi equals b pi. Solving for b, so we divide both sides by pi. b equals 2. So my equation is y equals 3 cosine 2 x minus pi over 4 minus 3. All right, let's go to number 2, right down here. Okay, again, just writing an equation for cosine. I need to draw my axis. Let's see. This is 4 and 6, so the total is 10, so 5 would be in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here. Double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 above. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 below. I always double check that. I say that because every year when people do these, they end up putting their axis not in the middle. And if they had counted, they might have realized that they didn't put it in the right place. So since I'm down 1, my d value is negative 1, 5 above, 5 below, my amplitude is 5. Okay, let's do my key points. And then I'm cosine, so my starting points would be on these peaks. All right. So let's see here. Um, this one is definitely the closest to this y-axis. And 
since it's not here, I'm going to say that this is halfway. So this is a half of a pi. So this must be a quarter of a pi. So this is to the left, pi over 4, which makes my c value plus pi over 4. Now let's see if we can figure out my period. Well, since I know that from here, well, actually, maybe I should use sine. I could use cosine, but sine, we could do a sine curve to here, which starts at zero. I know it's an upside down sine curve. It's not on the pi over two, so it must be halfway, which means um, this would be three quarters. You could also think of it, I actually with this one did do cosine. I knew from here to here was a quarter, and from here to here was a half. So a quarter and a half is three quarters. So I know that the period is three fourths pi. So two pi over b equals three pi over four. Cross multiply, and I get eight pi equals three pi b. Solving for b, so I divide both sides by three pi. B equals eight thirds. So when I go to write my equation, don't have much room there, I'm going to write it up top here. Y equals 5 cosine 8 thirds times x plus pi over 4 minus 1. All right, let's see how many more we can get in. Let's, um, let's do this one here on bottom right. Uh, this one's a little trickier. So I'll do this one with you, um, just maybe like as far as the map is concerned. So let's look at this. Um, one, two, three, four. So two would be in the middle. One, two. I double check. Two above, two below. That's what I wanted. So put down my A, B, C, and D values. And I'll just put my equation up top again. All right, I already know that I went down three, so the d value is negative three. My amplitude, we said, was up two and down two. Now, got to label those key points. And this time, when I check starting places, I'm going to want to be on the axis going up because now I'm looking at sine. All right. So all my starting places for sine are here, 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 and here. This one is at a quarter of a pi. This one looks like it's halfway between. So this one is closer, so I'm to the left pi over 4, which gives me plus pi over 4 in my equation. And let's look at this. For a period, I can see that I go from a quarter here all the way to halfway between a quarter and a half. Hmm. So this is between a quarter and a half would be an eighth. Or the way I can think of it is this is a quarter and this is an eighth. And I'm going to highlight again. This is one of those times where I'm going to do that thing where I find half of the sine curve and I'm just going to double it. Because I know that this distance here is a quarter. And from here to here, if it's halfway, half of a fourth is an eighth. So a quarter plus an eighth is the same as a quarter. Sorry. Two eighths plus one eighth. Because a quarter is two eighths. Which, which means my total here is 